Our $500 1,000 yard project rifle is coming along really well. The pillar bedding job is done, action bedding is done. We have finished the trigger job, which includes creep, over travel, pull weight reduction, and everything on this is humming along really well mechanically, or at least it should be. Uh, and right now, you can see that I have stripped down the Boyd stock, and I've started to remove all of that, uh, that kind of epoxy paint that was on the outside so that I can get down to the wood and uh, do some of the reshaping that I need. It's already feeling a lot better, and the lines are already a lot cleaner. This is going to look very good by the time I'm done, but I really need to hurry. For those of you that are not familiar with the project, what I'm doing here is for a total budget of $500, I'm taking a budget deer rifle and I'm turning it into something that I can compete with at a thousand yards. If you haven't subscribed already, I'd recommend you do so up here. If you like us on Facebook, you can chat with us or just see some extra goodies. Sometimes I have some behind the scenes footage that ends up there. This playlist down here is going to have everything in it, so if you miss something, you can see the entire project. Eagle-eyed viewers have noticed that there's something missing from this rifle, and of course that's the scope. And those of you that are budget conscious, after you've taken a look at the cost, $221 for the rifle, $154 for the stock, and then of course we're going to need a base and some rings, you know that there's not going to be much room left for the glass. And the common wisdom is that on a rifle you're supposed to have at least as much in your glass as you do on the, uh, the rifle itself. And I think that wisdom has actually changed over the past few years. About five years ago, I'd say that the common wisdom was twice as much glass as your rifle. And now, I think as of last year, it seems to be more appropriate to just get a mortgage on a really, really expensive scope. Throw out the rifle, you don't need it. All you need is just a really good scope. If I intend to shoot small groups at a thousand yards, I definitely need both. Now let me explain why I set up the budget the way that I did. I don't really trust that plastic stock on any of these budget rifles. Uh, the Axis plastic may be better than in previous years, but I'm still not going to trust it in a competition. I want something that's going to be nice and firm, and it's not going to have that forearm flex like you see on a lot of these budget rifles. I've had half MOA guns go up to six MOA easily just because of some flop up here in the forearm. This with its pillar bedding and action bedding is going to keep my groups nice and tight. If I had a limitless budget I would want the best glass money could buy. I would want a large diameter tube so I could get lots of elevation and windage adjustment and I would want very repeatable very fine uh, turrets. And as far as a feature set goes I would want everything to be about precision and that's about making minute changes during these shots. So I would want something like 1 8 MOA turrets. I would want some fiddly little uh, reticle so that I could make all kinds of last minute wind calls. And then I would want high magnification so that I could see small changes. Even in this ideal hypothetical situation where I have all the money I want, I think I would still prefer a second focal plane reticle over a first focal plane reticle. I'm after precision here. And first focal plane reticles, even though they make things a lot easier and more consistent across all zoom ranges, the second focal plane reticle can achieve more precision as you increase magnification. I'll do a video on this a little bit later, but there is still definitely a place for second focal plane. If I could nudge the budget up on this project just a couple hundred bucks, I would take the SWFA 20 power in a heartbeat. It has a mil quad reticle, a fixed 20 power magnification, very nice turrets, and a 30 millimeter tube. That thing would work smashingly for this kind of competition. Well, we don't have $300, we have $100. And that may make it sound like the optic is an afterthought, but that's not the case at all. From the very beginning, I've been juggling all kinds of parts, uh, the rifles, the stocks, the scopes, to see what we could actually do to get a $500 build. Okay, so we have the, the price of the, the rifle, we have the price of the stock, we have basin rings, and we have the Simmons 44 mag. And this tops out at 24 power. It has a mil dot reticle in the second focal plane. And it has 1 8 MOA turrets. So that's kind of the feature set that I was after. It even has side focus, which is nice. And on the face of it, that's what we're after. But the big question is, can 
a $100 scope with that kind of feature set actually compete in this kind of competition? Will it actually work? In the next video, we're going to take a close look at some of the ups and downs of this scope. And we're going to see where we anticipate that things might get a little weird. And in the final result, you know, really it's all going to come down to the competition. Does this thing actually perform in an F-Class match?